I see you guys are here to learn how to penetrate your enemies using an advanced penetration system. <laughs> I, I, I'm just kidding guys, it's advanced projectile system. So welcome to the first episode of APS Tutorial. And happy April Fools. April Fools is probably over, but hope you guys had fun, you know, stayed safe, thought about what your friend said two or three times before replying and still made fun out of yourself. And sadly, this episode took way longer than I expected, but eh, life can be hard sometimes. Beat the drums. So in the spirit of the April Fools, we are gonna start building a basic APS cannon today. A word to the experience, this episode is gonna be a very basic one for those who are just starting in the game. And if you already know how the basic APS works, I think you should skip to the next video. So to get started, first we'll look at what parts APS has to offer. The first is the advanced firing piece which is basically the heart of your cannon this thing tells the game that this is an APS cannon without it even a completely built APS won't get recognized and you know it's also the part that actually shoots the shells from your cannon and placing this will get you started on your big ass cannon Coming up next is the gauge increasers. These are the pieces which determine the internal diameter of your barrel, hence the size of your shell. A cannon can have 0 to 8 of these, while with none of these you'll be shooting peas, and with 8 of these you'll be shooting cheese. <laughs> okay, you'll actually be shooting human sized shells with 8 of these. These can only be connected in a straight line and they look like a pipe when connected together. Then there is the gauge splitters, you know, the T-shaped things which split your gauge and cooling unit lines so you can tetris them better and it doesn't have to be an ugly straw cannon. But dark cow, what are these cooling units? Well, these are the parts that cool down your barrel after each shot. A cannon won't be firing the next shell unless the barrels are cool. Otherwise, you know, it will melt from all the gunpowder blasts. So as you can anticipate, this thing is very important in making your cannons fire faster. The basic cooldown of the barrel depends on the amount of gunpowder in a shell and these things reduce that cooldown. So a minigun will need a lot of these and these have a stacking effect with diminishing returns. Then there are the six way connectors, pretty self explanatory, connects different pieces of the cannon. Auto loaders, the big cuboids that load the shell into your cannon for it to fire. Each auto loader has a cooldown before which it can load another shell which again depend on a multitude of factors. They come in different size and shapes, starting from 1 meter to 8 meters. Next up is ammo clips. While these are not mandatory for your cannons, these play a very vital role in making your cannons faster. These are basically the storage racks for your shells, which connect directly to the autoloaders. And as you can guess, without them you get abysmally slow reload speed since you have no buffer in between conversion of ammo into shells and loading them in an autoloader. Input feeders. These things feed ammo to your cannons. Without these, you won't be firing your cannon. Nada. Can be connected to an ammo clip autoloader or the firing piece itself. Although, it's in your best interest to connect this to an ammo clip. Manlets connect directly in front of the firing piece and allow the barrel to move freely up to a certain angle, which means better aiming for your cannons and a bad day for your enemies. Barrels. Do I even need to explain what barrels are? I don't think so. 
Now, to get started with actually building the cannon, first we will start with the advanced firing piece. Do, do not worry about the robot, it's there for perspective. Then we will place gauge increasers because let's not be shooting peas. As you notice, with each of these, the thickness of the barrel increases. We will place the max amount, that is 8, which will make this a 500mm cannon. Then, in the options, you can limit the gauge to whatever you want. For now, I will leave it at no limit, which will give you the biggest possible barrel, with the number of gauge increasers you have. Then. I'll place a gauge splitter so we don't get a straight line. Make sure the bottom of the T is facing towards the connected parts or it won't be working. Then I'll place a ridiculous amount of cooling units for this one just to eliminate the barrel cooldown for demonstration purposes. Now we will try turning the barrel and notice it's a lazy one. But it's not his fault, is it? You know what I'm saying? It needs a mallet. Now there are five mallets, each having a different elevation, azimuth, health and armor value. Choose the one according to your ship's need. <laughs> I actually wrote sheeps in the script. Why? So yeah, I think you guys are smart enough to check out the stats of different manlets and then choose one that best fits your cannon. The Omni manlets provide both elevation and azimuth while the elevation ones, well, <laughs> it's in the name. And there you have it, they're complete cannon. <laughs> I'm just kidding guys, we're just getting started. Then we need to load shells into the cannon, which we can do directly. Bad idea, very bad idea, I tell you. Are using autoloaders. There are two kinds of autoloaders, bell fed and normals. We will look at the bell fed later because it's a special one. The normal ones come at different sizes ranging from 1 meter to 8 meters. Larger shells need larger autoloaders. Who would have thought? These autoloaders can be connected directly to the firing piece. Any gauge increasers or cooling units, even if it's via a six way connector, and they connect to other autoloaders as well. Nothing connects to the remaining surface of these gauge splitters. I really don't know why they did that. Then We'll need to transfer shells into the autoloader from our ammo boxes. You can do that directly. Haven't you learned yet? Bad gunsmith. Very bad. Or through ammo clips. Then connect the appropriately sized ammo clips to the autoloaders. Make sure the green part that looks like suction cup is connected to the green stubs on the autoloaders. They work like a male and female slot. You can then add from 1 to 5 ammo clips to a normal autoloader. Yes, I said 5. Due to game mechanics, this is considered a working clip. Wow. <laughs> then, if you want, you can make your clips larger by stacking them. But bear in mind, they still are considered a single clip, just longer. Reversing the clip works as well. Then, you can add ammo input feeders to any one or all the green studs on the ammo clips and autoloaders. It doesn't matter where you place them because the autoloader with its ammo clips are considered one entity and one ammo feeder alone connected anywhere will supply all the clips with ammo. More ammo input feeders just makes the loading faster. You should probably do that. Now we need to make a shell using ammo customizers and modules. Don't look at this. This is a very bad example of a shell. 
Go to my shell tutorial for good ones. In the customizer menu here, you can see two ticks in this bar. The lower tick is fixed since it denotes the gauge of your actual cannon. There will be more ticks here if there are more cannons in my ship. The upper one is slideable so you can see the stats of the shell in different gauges. Crank it up to your cannon. In our case, it's 500 mm. Look at the cell size and make sure you have big enough loaders. Smaller shells can fit into larger ones but not the other way around. Now there is another thing that will be important here is the expected loading time from the clip. This denotes the time it takes for each shell to go inside your autoloaders from the clip as long as the autoloader is empty. This will be important later. Now we will select an ammo input feeder. You can also do this from the Canon main controls. Then we'll assign every input to the shell we just created and then we wait. As we can see here even though the ammo input feeders are only on the clip on the right, the other clips connected to this autoloader also get filled. Notice how you can place the input feeders in these areas as well. So the rule of thumb, wherever there is a green stud you can place an ammo input feeder. To demonstrate belt fed auto loaders, I am gonna increase the number of barrels so the 500 millimeter gauge gets split into six of them and each barrel gets 150 millimeter gauge. Coming up next is the belt fed auto loader. These are special auto loaders and only come in the one meter variants. You can only connect one ammo clip to these no matter how long they are. You know, since it only has one green stud. <laughs> they have a ridiculously low innate load timer modifier, hence they are used to make small shelled, well not necessarily low gauge, but small shelled, guttling or machine guns. Another thing about these is you absolutely cannot start firing through a belt fed autoloader unless the clip is completely loaded. And once it starts firing, you can't load shells into the clip until it has stopped firing for the amount of seconds you state in the menu here. This is not the case with the normal autoloaders. So basically, if you run out of shells in a battle, you dead, son. <laughs> that was stupid. <laughs> But Dark Cow, you say, these only fire one shell every minute, that's not practical, is it? Well, no, my child, that was the absolute basics of making a working gun. There are a lot more complications to an APS, for now I'll just say that more autoloaders equals more firing rate, but that's just like saying placing one piece completes the whole jigsaw. <laughs> so I suggest go take a break, eat some coffee, and off to the next episode we go. So, if you are paying attention today, what we learned is we start with an advanced firing piece, then place the needed amount of gauge increasers, followed by some cooling units. Then we get ourselves some auto loaders and attach ammo clips to them, and put ammo input feeders where we feel appropriate so the ammo gets in. And that basically makes an APS cannon. This episode was written, recorded, and edited by Dark Cow Noah, that is me. And special thanks to Normal and Matey69 to help me out with this episode.